This is a pretty hard question, and it's because of the wording of the question itself. They're really trying to like mess with us a little bit here. And so this is just a great reminder uh, of how important it is to show your work. It may seem stupid, even when the question is small, but it really does help us to underline the key ideas as we go through so they don't miss anything important. And there are three key ideas that I notice in this particular question. So let's, let's see. It can most reasonably be inferred from the passage that the nutrient requirements, okay, so that's one thing, I'm going to want to pay attention and look for that, of many plants, and that's number two, and that's a little strange because this passage isn't about many plants. It's about one particular plant, so that's a little strange. Um, and the nutrient requirements of these many plants have the consequence of whatever, right? So there's three things. When I'm going through these lines, I want to see that they're talking about nutrient requirements. I want to see what the consequence of those requirements are. And I'd love to hear something about other plants. So that's... That's a, lo a long list for one question, but you know, it's at least giving me something to focus on because there's a lot of science here, and I might get lost in that science if I'm you know, not focused on anything. It, it lets your mind wander, and we don't want that. We want to be know what we're looking for here. So we're still going to follow the QLC method. We've read the question. Now we're supposed to go to the line references, and the line references are in question 27. So let's take a look at these and see if they check off any of these boxes from the first part here, the question. So 16 to 21, that's right here. It's a long line reference. Uh, Matthew Kluster from Harvard University and colleagues empirically investigated whether the dried bracts, specialized leaves on a rare woodland plant, Monotropsis odorata, I don't know, uh, might serve a similar purpose as the stripes on a tiger or the gray coloration of the wings of the peppered moth, namely to hide. So I don't really see them at nutrient requirements. They're not really talking about many different plants. They're talking about one particular plant here. And I don't know any consequences of anything because they haven't talked about anything about this plant at all, really. So um, I don't really get anything from this. This feels like they're just kind of introducing what the topic is. But let's keep going. 22 to 25, I'd, I'd cross that one out. But let's look at 22 to 25, see if we get anything better. Monotropsis odorata is a fascinating plant species as it relies exclusively upon mycorrhizal, <laughs> I have no idea what these words are, uh, fungus that associates with its roots for all of the resources it needs to live. So, okay, that's one, one of the things that I wanted, right? That's uh, the nutrient requirements. So they are talking about that. Beyond that, though, I, I don't see the other things, but they might be there. For now, I'm not going to worry about it, though. I'm going to keep going. Let's see what else happens in these other choices. If I need to dive deeper on this particular choice, I will. But for now, I kind of just know to keep it. That's good enough. Uh, so 25 to 30, just the next little piece here. Uh, because this plant no longer requires photosynthetic pigmentation, i.e. green coloration, to produce its own energy, it is free to adopt a broader range of possibilities in coloration, much like fungi or animals. So, okay. They are still talking about resources because they're talking about the energy, right? And photosynthesis. And now we've got that word because, and that's kind of important, right? We were, we were looking for a consequence of the resources. So uh, this seems like it. And this goes to show that strong words, or at least words that we should pay attention to, don't always have like, you know, these big, loud meanings that jump off the page. Sometimes they're the more transition-y connector words that we would normally ignore. We're looking for a because here. And so we just found one, a consequence. So again, I'm not going to interpret this anymore. I'm going to just kind of keep moving and see what we get. Uh, let's look at D, uh, 31 to 34. That is here. Using a large population of Monotropsis odorata, Kluster and colleagues experimentally removed the dried bracts that cover the 3 to 5 centimeter tall stems and flower buds of these woodland plants. Well, okay, that doesn't tell me anything about the nutrient requirements. There's no consequence here because it's what the, the experimenters are doing, not any consequence of the plant itself. So this choice I think is bad. This is just some random science fact, I guess. So cool, I got rid of two choices on a hard question. That's that's a good start. Now one thing I, I didn't notice though is this talk of many plants, right? It seems like we were always talking about this one particular plant. So that's strange and it's something I'm gonna to wanna to pay attention to. But the connected piece of the question is the word inferred. So what might be happening here is that they're saying something about this particular plant and how it's different. 
And so what we're supposed to then do is kind of reverse the sentence or reverse the line and say, well, okay, if this is true of this one plant, then the opposite is true of all the other plants. And that's what makes this plant unique. So it's annoying when that happens, but it does happen occasionally on the SAT. It's, it's a mark of a hard question, but that word inferred sometimes kind of goes along with something being hard. So it's not a surprise. But let's look at these choices here and see what we can find out um, about them. So exaggerating the plant's coloration patterns. Okay, so they are talking about how the, uh, the fungus gives it the resources. Okay, and then in choice C, because here we're, now we're talking about coloration, uh, it's free to adopt a broader range of possibilities in coloration. So more colors than other plants. What I'm doing right now is a dumb summary. And you know what? It's really important when things get confusing to just simplify them. And you don't need to understand every single nuance. You just kind of need to capture like the most basic part that you understand. That's what makes it a dumb summary is you're not trying to, you know, learn about the plant. You're just trying to capture what someone else is saying. And so what they're saying here is odorata different because more colors. So, okay, in that case then, why would the nutrient requirements of other plants exaggerate those other plants' colors, right? Other plants are just green. So they're just green because they have to be green because of photosynthesis. So this choice is related. I'm not going to eliminate it, but there's a little bit of a, a, a disconnect here between what they're saying about this plant and what this choice is saying about other plants. What's happening is more that this particular plant has different colors, maybe exaggerated colors, because of the fungus that's letting it, that's giving it nutrients. So if we reversed that, then the other plants don't have any exaggerated colors because they need to have a certain color, green, for their own nutrient requirements. If this is confusing you, yeah, like that's why this is a hard question. This is a confusing question. Let's keep going. I think maybe it'll make more sense. B, it's limiting the plant's defensive options. Well, right away, I don't like this choice because of that word defensive options. They, I didn't really talk about that. Um, however, we kind of do have a little bit about that in an answer choice that we eliminated, a line that we eliminated um, right here. They do talk about the stripes of a tiger or the wings of a moth as a way to hide. So hiding camouflage is a, is a defense. It's a way to not get eaten, right? So it's not in the lines that we're being, that we're focused on. But this is why the no reading strategy in general works is that even the wrong line references are important. And, I, and they're directing us to those lines to kind of make sure that we have the information we need for the choices that are correct. And so that choice A that was wrong, it's still helping us understand choices B and C a little bit better. So this idea of defensive options, that at first seems wrong to me because it's not mentioned in that line. But it is mentioned in another line. So I have to kind of like uh, maybe backtrack a little bit and keep it in the mix. Let's keep going. Uh, so the nutrient requirements increases the plant's energy consumption. So they do talk about energy, right? They're talking about resources, things like that. But are they really comparing the consumption of energy between this one odorata plant and all the other plants? They're not saying one has more or uses more energy, uses less energy. It's just a different way of getting energy. And this is some classic SAT uh, thinking here, right? They want us to see a difference as some sort of ranking. One is better than another. But we have to be careful, that's not what is said. They're not saying one is better, they are just saying that they are different. And so we can't talk about this like as something having a, a, you know, an increased energy consumption or, or another one having a less energy consumption. We just, that's not what they're saying, about the energy at least. Choice D, narrowing the plant's potential habitats. Well, here's one I, I'm pretty sure it's just never talked about. They're now, never talking about where plants live. So that's gone. So now we come back to this, this A and B choice here. 
I'm just going to skip to the answer. And this is something that I would have struggled with on an actual test if I were taking this. I would have been down to these choices in A and B, and I would have had to think about it a little bit more. But I think it's better at this point if I just give you the answers and explain why they are what they are. So, the nutrients that other plants, the way that other plants get their nutrients is from the sun. And we know that because in line reference C, they talk about the pigmentation for photosynthesis. So they're getting their plants from the sun. And so when other plants get their, the way that they get it from the sun, it means that they have to be green, green, because that's how it works. I don't understand the, the chemistry of it, but that's what they're saying here in line reference C is that they're green because of the way that they get their nutrients. That's most plants, many plants. However, they're using this particular plant as an example of what happens when you get your resources, your nutrients from somewhere else, from this fungus, I guess. Right now, you have more options for your colors because you don't have to be green anymore. You can be a red plant, a blue plant. I don't even know. I don't know what it even looks like. But you have options. And so the, the sentence that we're looking at here is talking about the fact that this specific odorata plant has a broader range of possibilities, right? So this plant, it's good that it has more options for its color. So the other plants that are kind of in the background of this conversation have fewer options. And why might that be bad? Well, because one use of different colors is to hide, camouflage, play defense, and not get eaten. So I don't like that we have to kind of jump so far around these lines to kind of really understand that. But it is a rare question that does require that. And so just, it, just be prepared. It happens occasionally, but it's rare. The reason A is wrong, exaggerating the plant's coloration patterns, is the other plants are all green. There's nothing exaggerated about them. They're all the same color. And they're the same color because they all have to get their energy from the sun the same way. So there's no exaggeration of those other plants' color patterns. However, the reason this is a trap answer is, I guess in a way, there kind of is an exaggeration of the colors of the odorata plant. It can have a broader range of colors because it's getting its nutrients from somewhere else. So a different phrasing of this question probably would have had choice A as the answer. If the question was more about the odorata, I think that choice A is the answer. And that's what makes it a trap, is we're so used to reading about this one particular plant that that's what we think we're being asked about. But the question has done something sneaky, and it has kind of, it's using this odorata almost as a counterexample for all the other plants. And we have to kind of sense that and figure that out. And so that all comes back to the beginning, where I said, we need to show our work. Look at all the work I had to do for this question. If you really want these hard, hard questions, you better roll up your sleeves and grab your sharpened pencil, and you're going to have to mark things up. It's not like this all the time, and when I do most reading questions, there's a lot that goes on in my head, but things that don't, that, that, that uh, ideas that I have about words that are important, those words are getting underlined on my page, whether those words appear in the question, the answer choice, or the lines themselves. I'm always underlining things. I, I need something to physically show my brain that these words are important. So taking that split second to underline something might be worth saving some of these really, really difficult points.